Driving down the road that I grew up on once again It's when I pass your door the memories come back again Pictures of us flooding back just like a wave Makes me wonder what happened, what you're up to today Remember when we stole your mother's car, we drove for days Teenagers with too many feelings and rage We were higher than the ceiling Little fingers to the sky I remember thinking if I only could stop the time Way back when We didn't care what they said People could stare I didn't give a damn Cause I was being Back when we didn't care what they said People could stare, I didn't give a damn Cause all I needed was my friend Way back when Way back when Way back when Remember when my father taught us how to play guitar You can see all the way down there. That's creepy. Well, hi guys, welcome back to the channel. The Watsons are at it again. We are ice fishing today on a new lake. It's a blistering 18 to 20 something degrees out here, so it's super hot. We're gonna set up our ice tent, drop these poles in the water. This lake is interesting because all the other ones we've been to, they're covered in snow, which kind of gives you the illusion that you're not really walking on a lake, right? A frozen lake. However, this lake, as you just saw, you can see all the way down. This lake has got to be like two to three feet thick of ice at least. I mean, I don't even know, but it is freaking creepy when you're walking on this ice and you can see through. I don't want to see through to the bottom of the lake. It's just tripping me out. But anyway, I'm super excited. We left the puppies home today just because uh, as you can tell this is a little bit of a busier area and I you know sometimes we see dogs out people don't have their dogs locked up and we didn't want to have to worry about keeping them on leashes the whole time or making them stay in the ice tent the whole day that we were fishing so the puppies are at home chilling in the nice warm cabin and we're out here trying to catch some trout I'm trying to stay on the snow. <laughs> oh, that's 
the three. Okay. All right, we can do this. We're gonna pretend like we're not walking on water. Trippy. Maybe I'll get used to it one day. I don't know, but this is seriously tripping me out. Yikes. Ooh. This is so slippery. We're almost to the island, Parker. <laughs> we can make it. Look, Dad's way up there. Yeah. Oh my goodness. This is so slippery. We need like ice cleats or something. Well, this looks like a good sign. Looks like somebody was catching something over here. Slaying them. Look at that. Yeah. Fish. So, Parker. Yes. Today's school lesson is how to go ice fishing. Okay. How to bite a hook. How to snag a. How to got it and how to cook it for dinner. because it looks like they were quite successful, but they've already frozen over quite a bit, so Joe's gonna re-auger them right now, and then we'll set the tent over top. Don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see it on that drone shot. Totally ate crap on the ice on the way out. <laughs> it's actually not funny. <laughs> oh, I didn't hit my head though. Just completely took my feet right out from underneath me. Landed on my back. Shook up my brain a little bit, but. Ay, it's so slippery. And then you set them up. Can you make up this right here? You're gonna set stuff, yeah, set it on the pan. I actually like that you can see the bottom. I'm gonna go through the oh. Here, Parker. I'm gonna set the chairs up on this side, P. Oh. Push the black tarp down a little bit. Okay. Push it out. Hold on. Make sure you don't drop your foot in the hole. Yeah. <laughs> don't get the camera though. Oh. Oh. Here's Parker's chair. So unfortunately, we forgot the ice tent stakes at home and it is actually pretty windy out on this lake. We haven't been to a lake that's been this windy yet, so Joe created a little anchor using the auger. Hopefully that keeps it in place, <laughs> or else we might be blowing away here in a little bit. But we're all set up, so now we're gonna get these poles baited and drop them down in these holes and see if today is the day that we get lucky.
Think that auger's gonna hold the tent down, babe? That's all we got. <laughs> well, hopefully. hopefully. Parker, you didn't waste any time getting your pole in the water, huh? <laughs> Part of that I'm catching me a fish today. You can do it, buddy. All right, so we got a Markham sonar fish finder. Joe's new little toy. It's got a camera on it so we can see the bottom of the lake. I say we just give her to go. What do you say, Joe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, tease them fish, P. Call them in, buddy. A big little fish? Yeah. It's kind of an oxymoron, Parker. Yeah. <laughs> Oxytina. Oxytina. <laughs> Oxytina. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's enough weight. That looks like a big yeah. pike down there, Mom. Yeah, that ain't enough weight, Joe. It's like not even going anywhere. Oh, wait, never mind. being able to see what's going on down there. Yeah. It's so much warmer in this tent. <laughs> I don't even think we need the heater. Mm -hmm, like, I don't really need the heater. I feel nice and toasty in here. Here, fishy, 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 fishy. There's a ton of little ones down there. I can see them. Hey little fishy, get on my pole. Hey little fishy, jump out of that hole. Right, Joe? You gotta sing the fishy song, babe. It's our song. Yeah. Oh my gosh, there's so many little fish. Go away, little fish. We don't want you. We want your mommy. Maybe they'll bring the big fish. Maybe. All right, so we're about 30 minutes in and nothing yet, but I did get a big bite and it was a big trout because we saw it right on the screen of the fish finder. <laughs> it's pretty cool having that camera down there so we can see what's going on. And then we saw two other really big trout swim by the camera, so they're definitely down there. We're only at about, what do you say, Joe? About five feet, right? About, about five feet-ish. So we're gonna keep at it. Just turn the heater on. It's definitely getting chilly in here. No luck yet. We have three pop-ups that we just baited and we're getting ready to go auger some holes that are out just a little bit deeper. I've been told by many people up here that the fishing is good between five and 20 feet. So right now we're at about five feet. So we're gonna go auger some holes out a little bit deeper, drop some pop-ups and see if we have any luck that way. You're taking my anchor, Joe. Better hope there's no big old gusts of wind while you're gone. <laughs> Oh, Joe, you look so good with your auger. Oh. We're starting to get a little bit of a complex. We don't ever catch fish, even in Virginia. I take that back. One time we did catch a pickled pike and it was good eating too, but 
we just never catch anything. So, I mean, you know, we aren't the kind of people that give up. So we're gonna keep at it. It's like, we have all the things. We have all the gear, we've got the tent, we've got the right bait. Just gotta get lucky. I'm thinking the only way we're gonna catch fish in Alaska is by like dip netting some salmon. <laughs> where we could actually just drop a net down and pull them up because man, we just don't have any luck fishing with poles. But we're gonna keep at it. We're gonna speak it into existence, right? Yes, that's what we're gonna do. I just wanna see Parker catch a fish. He would seriously lose it if he actually caught a fish and reeled it up. I just wanna see his precious little face. So we're not giving up. We're gonna go put in these pop-ups. Maybe we'll catch something out there. I don't know. And it's almost time for lunch. I just made simple, uh, bologna sandwiches with cabbage. I love bologna sandwiches and cabbage. I actually prefer them fried, but obviously coming out here, I just made regular bologna with cabbage, mayonnaise and mustard, and brought some pickles on the side, and of course some delicious deviled eggs that little Parker made for us. So we're about to have lunch here in a few minutes. So we have this little family that just came in next to us. They actually parked like 20 feet from us. I don't get that, but you know, maybe it's just like a lower 48 thing. I'm like, you got a whole lake and you got to come park 20 feet from our fishing tent. But anyway, he just caught a trout. Mm. How far down should we put that? Mm, I don't know. All right, we have a flag up. So I'm running as fast as I can on the ice. Oh. Huh? It is so slippery, I don't wanna fall again. Oh, please let there be a fish. Gosh. Oh, Parker's so excited. Oh, I cannot go very fast. Hurry, hurry, is there anything on there? Oh, dang it. Sweetie. Must, must have been the wind. The wind? Do you have the, uh, is it too touchy? Do you think you need to set it? do it on the bigger one, yeah. Yeah, oh, bummer. Well, we'll keep trying, Parker, okay? Mm-hmm. How deep do you think we need it? Joe, get that other pole out of the way. He's gonna get tangled. Where is it? Is it's it good? Oh. Just keep going, he might come back. Got him, got him! Got him, get him up, get him up, get him up! Get him up, get him up, get him up, get him up! Parker, don't let him go back in that hole! <laughs> Parker, grab him, please! Get it! Don't! <laughs> Dad, grab it! It's so 
slippery. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, we got a trout. <laughs> Oh. He's putting up a fight. Here, buddy, can you hold him? Stick your finger in his mouth. Don't let him go. He's gonna have teeth, so oh, don't be all scared and drop him. Stick Why don't you wrap him there. in the towel, honey? Got it. Just don't get scared. Just stick your finger in there. He ain't gonna hurt you, P. Hold him. Squeeze You're stronger it. than him. Your there you Squeeze go. tight. There you go. It's okay, little guy. Look at you, P. <laughs> good job, buddy. You and Dad, that was good teamwork. Pray, buddy. Tell yeah. Mama to pray. Yeah. Joe, you didn't pray. Wait. We should pray that we catch like 32 fish. 32 fish. Maybe we'll get lucky, like the disciples, and Jesus will give us a whole bunch. At least yeah. two. <laughs> yeah. Dear Lord, thank you for this food. Please bless it and nourish it to our bodies, Lord. Thank you for all of our blessings and this beautiful fish we got today. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes. Are friends leaving? Yes, we can go to the holes, Dad. Daddy, we can go to the holes. Why do you want to go there? Because they were catching a whole bunch. No, they caught one. And we just caught one. Parker's over there fishing in that guy's hole. They already left. So he's like, Mom, I'm gonna go try out that hole. Joe went to get the truck. I think that when we are ready to leave and we pack up, we're actually gonna just drive back across the lake. We have yet to do that. Let me tell you why. Because it terrifies me. But there has been several other vehicles out here, including trucks, driving on the lake today, and they seem to be just fine. So I'm assuming that it's safe to drive out here it just still feels really weird like that's you know how many thousands of pounds is the truck and we're gonna drive across this frozen lake <laughs> but we're gonna give it a shot versus walking all the way back that was a pretty long walk to get out here and it was super slippery so to avoid any more mishaps we're gonna go ahead and try to load up the truck and drive it across the lake to get out of here later on oh my gosh here comes Joe with the truck it looks so weird seeing this truck on the ice <laughs> I wonder how Joe's feeling inside right now. He has never driven his truck on a lake that's frozen. Oh. Don't come so close to the tent, homie. Don't need all that weight over here. How'd that feel, Joe? Huh? Was that scary? A little sketchy. A little sketchy? <laughs> yeah, it's dead. Dang, it's like paralyzed. Mm -hmm. It's frozen, baby. It's like good? gutting a chicken. Like gutting a chicken. In today's science class, Sorry. we're going to be dissecting Zoology. an Alaskan lake trout. Trip it out like a man, buddy. Yeah. It won't come out. LED light makes the light flicker, Joe. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh, now there you go. Dropping it in there? Yep. You see the bait in there. One hand after the other. Keep going. Keep Try going. It. Pull it up on the ice. Pull it up on the ice. Pull the string. It's oh, 
we lost it. <sighs> Dang it. Aw. It's okay. It happens, P. It happens. Let's get it back in there. Let's get another shrimp. Maybe we can catch them back again. It's all good. Just leave that here and go get a shrimp. And I'll wait, okay? Hurry up. Oh, poor Parker. We had another trout. Do you see it? It was a good size too, but it happens. It got off, so we'll rebait it, stick it back down there, and try again. <laughs> push it, push it. Well, it just got super cold out here super fast <laughs> that always happens when the sun goes down and it is really windy on this lake we just had the tent almost fly over so we've decided to collapse everything pack it up for the day and head home but this was a success we caught our first fish in Alaska and I know from here on out it's just gonna get better Well, good morning, friends. Today we are heading out for an impromptu supply run. We need a snow blower on this property. Last time it dumped on us, and Joe usually handles the snow pretty good with the Polaris and the snow plow, but getting up around the house and the sheds and everything, it would be really nice if we had a snow blower. While he's out plowing the driveway and the road, I can be working on the property around the cabin. Last time we went to buy one, they were completely sold out everywhere we went, and they didn't have a clue when they were gonna get more in stock. Yesterday, while we were in town fishing, we noticed that one of the stores had a whole lot Line of snow blowers for sale. They finally got some more in, but by the time we got done fishing, they were closed. So before they're all sold out again, we're going to make a quick run back to town. I say quick, it's never quick, but meaning we're going straight there and straight back to pick up a snow blower. And then we're also going <clears> to, <throat> sorry, it is so freaking cold this morning. <laughs> And anytime I'm like trying to talk and I'm taking in deep breaths, it's hard to breathe when it's this cold outside. Anyway, there we go, that was a good breath. We're gonna go to Lowe's and we're gonna pick up some lumber for a project that I've kind of been nudging Joe about. You guys know I love to garden. There's no way that we're gonna have the greenhouse up by this summer for growing a garden. There's just no way. We have to wait for the ground to thaw out and everything to do the foundation and everything that we wanna do for our forever greenhouse, which I plan on it being fairly large. But just because we're not gonna have the greenhouse this year doesn't mean we can't have a really good garden. So I think what we're gonna do is some raised beds this year and we're gonna build our own boxes, kind of like we did at our one acre homestead in Virginia. You guys might remember our garden there. We had a greenhouse and a garden hoop house that we built, but we also had an outside garden with raised beds that did really well. So obviously we'll have to do electric fencing to keep the moose and animals out and get some crop covers to keep them warm on the cool evenings and things like that. But we're gonna do a garden this year. So we're gonna get started early and get these boxes built. That way when it's time to plant, we're ready to go.
We got a snowblower. We didn't think we were gonna get one. The guy was like, oh, those are all spoken for. They've all been sold. And then his homie comes up behind him and he's like, there's three out there that aren't sold yet. <laughs> so he goes back out there and checks and sure enough, there was three available. Thankfully we got one. It's quite the drive into town. So I was gonna be a little bummed if we came all the way to town and couldn't get one again. But we got one. Are you happy, Joe? Uh, you're the snowblower. I'm the snowblower? I'm the snowplower. Okay, so you got designated roles. I see how that goes, I like it. <laughs> I can do that. I used to mow the lawn in Virginia. I loved mowing. It's very peaceful. I thought about life a lot. <laughs> I have no issue snow blowing. That'll be nice. We can work as a team. Make it a lot easier on you. So now we're going to head in to get some lumber for these garden boxes. I asked Joe what he's planning on doing, but of course it's all in his head like usual. Probably similar to what we did in Virginia, but we'll have to get some topsoil and some compost and do up a good soil the beginning of spring so that we can get these plants in there but I think that'll be good for our first year's garden Joe what do you think yeah, yeah? at least we can grow some stuff right like you're not we're not gonna have the space that we would in the greenhouse but yeah. we can grow some stuff I'm happy with that if we can get some chickens for eggs y'all what is going on with the egg shortage <laughs> There are like no eggs anywhere and we finally found a place last night that had eggs and they were almost nine dollars a dozen And then they were rationing them out per family. You couldn't get more than two cartons per family. I Need my chickens. So we are on the hunt for chickens or chicks I kind of wanted to get some adult hens just so we could start having eggs right away but at the same time I'm kind of thinking I want to start out with brand new chicks. That way I have more life on them. I can raise them up from the beginning. So we'll see. Oh my gosh, you're covered in snow. Oh, you guys are hardcore. Oh my goodness, they love fetch. Good morning. It is an amazing day today on the Alaska homestead as far as the weather. This is the first time I have been outside without a jacket on, I think. Maybe once or twice, but the point is, it's like, what is it, Joe, in the 20s? I think it's in the 20s, but 
that feels like the 70s for us, you know, so it's amazing. So we decided to get outside today and soak up some of the sunshine. We have a few things we got to do. Joe needs to change the oil in our generator. You guys know we're on complete uh, solar power. And for the days that we don't get a lot of sun, we do use the generator to charge up the batteries. So we got a new generator not too long ago and it's time to change the oil. So we're going to get that done today. And we need to get the snow cleared off of our shed. Gunner's like, give it to me, bro. We're supposed to be helping each other out. It's a fight until they get back. <laughs> Look, they're covered in snow. One Good boy. To, the other one has to get it before they get back. Stay. Stay. Good boy, stay. No. I tell you guys how much I love Alaska. Seriously, it is, what is today? Uh, January 21st. So we've officially been here over two months, about two and a half months since we got here to the cabin. And Joe retires officially February 1st. So we are almost there friends and we are so excited. We're still getting used to this retirement life. Just being able to go to bed when we want, get up when we want, do what we want. It's such a blessing that we join the military at such a young age because if we didn't, we would still be working. And uh, the Lord really blessed us with that decision at 17 years old. The recruiter came to school, the army recruiter, Sergeant Mitchell, I'll never forget him. And he sat me down and explained to me how much money we could make, me and Joe both, if we went in the army together. Cause we were already married. We got married when I was 17. And I was like, that sounded pretty good. Like we lived in this little town in Arizona. We were living in a single wide trailer. I really didn't see a way to anything bigger than that. And then when this recruiter got to me, I, I saw, I saw a way out. I saw a way to live our dreams and see the world. And that's exactly what we did. We joined right out of high school. And uh, I did 10 years, decided to get out, stay home with the babies. Uh, had this calling to be home with the kids. I wanted to work, but I wanted my kids more. And I got tired of going to work, feeling homesick every day for my babies. So after 10 years active duty, I came home. Oh. Joe stayed in, but here we are. It's done. 20 years of service and we're out here living our best life bringing you guys along with us super cool <laughs> that's what the dogs do they lay in the snow to cool off look at him <laughs> joe he's completely covered it's <laughs> and look at bradley peeing right next to him <laughs> So many people are like, oh, your dogs need jackets, your dogs need shoes. No, they don't. These dogs are well aware of what they need when they need it. And as you can tell, when they're outside playing like this, they're extremely hot and they actually go into the snow on purpose and lay down to cool their body temps down. So they're perfectly fine. Super thick, two coats of fur. These dogs are good. They're made for this kind of weather. We do have jackets for them and little booties for their feet. You guys saw that. 
uh, just because we do get negative temps here and if we're going to be outside for an extended period of time doing something in those temperatures we do put them on there to help the dogs out but when they're outside on days like this where it's 20 something degrees and they're actively running and playing they don't need all that stuff so i got an interesting email we were um approached by the tv show life below zero <laughs> and uh they inquired about speaking with us on the phone and um, I did email her back and I told her you know I'm open to a phone conversation but Joe and I talked about it and it did not take us long to come to the conclusion like we're just not interested in that um, for one I love my YouTube channel and we're big freedom people and part of that is the freedom to record what we want, film how we want um, and uh, I don't know if I would want a TV crew in our home and in our lives that just seems really intrusive to me and we watch life below zero i mean most people do the dogs hey hey but it is kind of frustrating in fact i've joked on a couple other videos like a lot of it is scripted you know it's it's just not natural to me i don't like scripted stuff you know what we record here on our channel is just our life i mean it's take it or leave it whether it's interesting to you or not this is our life like this is what we're doing today we're changing the oil in the generator clearing the snow off the sheds having a little fun with the dogs outside um it's just that's our life and i have worked really really hard to build up this youtube channel for the last oh my gosh five years it's been five years since we started the channel but I've worked hard and I, I don't want to give that up to become you know someone on a TV show to make some money we're just we like our privacy that's part of why we came out here into the middle of Alaska and you know we're happy with our YouTube channel we're happy with our YouTube family we're happy with the income that we make off of our channel maybe someday it'll become more maybe it won't nonetheless we're happy so I told her, you know, it seemed a bit intrusive to me and we just weren't interested in welcoming that into our lives. So we're going to be here with y'all on Home Free Alaska on YouTube. I'm like, you can catch it with the toy. Come here. Sit. Stay. Come here. Sit. Stay. Stay. Oh, such good puppies. Listening to you, huh, Parker? Yeah. <laughs> that takes serious self control. Yeah. You guys uh, know we grow sourdough bread trees here in Alaska. Did you know that? Yeah, they're pretty rare, but they're here. You just gotta look for them. I'm just kidding. Do you guys follow me on Instagram? <laughs> if you are not following us on Facebook and Instagram, go check us out, Home Free Alaska. I posted a story yesterday about my sourdough bread fail and it was really more like sourdough bricks. I know how to do sourdough bread. I have a playlist here with our videos where I show some recipes that are my go-to tried and true, but I was trying a new cookbook out and the measurements were just, all wrong anyway the birds seem to love it so joe broke the bread apart stuck it up in the trees and little chickadees have been coming over and pecking some good old sourdough ready yeah. let me hold bradley bradley ah! sit sit you stay stay all right p you're good stay stay gunner Good boy, B. Ready? Go. Here's our Furman generator. We picked this up about a month ago. Does pretty good. So whenever we don't have uh, sun, we just use the generator to charge up the batteries. Works pretty good, huh, Joe? Yeah. Well, the other one's broke. Yeah. We had a little generator drama in Rick. the beginning. <laughs> Is it Briggs and Stratton? Joey. Craftsman. What are you doing? I can't see your eyes. Are you a vato? Vato loco. What's the other one? Generac. Hey, no. we'll call you Jose. You don't like Jose? Jose! Jose! Start that. 
Dang, Gunner, you are one sexy dog. Seriously. If I was a Belgian Malinois, I would totally hit on you right now. I'm just saying. I like that beard too. Kylie's touching metal, so I need something in between. Oh, yeah. What's that for? The old oil? Good. What do I do first? Choke. Choke. Uh, above the air filter there. Air filter. Black box. <laughs> this here? Yep. Okay. Gas, turn it on. Center. Down. Okay. Center. Yep. Turn it on over there to the, your right side. No, no, no. Oh, put it back. The switch. Turn the switch on over there to the right side. Okay. And then just pull it. You going for a little ride, P? Yeah. Just the right here on the driveway, or what? Yeah. All right. Be careful, okay? that's not a snow machining helmet we had a helmet for Parker for his uh, dirt bike but it is too small Parker's got a big head so we're gonna have to go in and get him a better helmet but for now at least it's a helmet <laughs> going super slow and he's very careful but yeah we are aware that that is not a snow machining helmet so please don't send me a million comments telling me that I know it's nothing new but it's so good to see you we do this every day and I'm still so amazed by you So hold me tight through the night mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just us two, me and you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 I can't believe you love me
Up. What is it? This little o ring. Do you have any more? Uh, maybe. As most of you know, Joe's a mechanic. That's what he did in the Coast Guard. In the Army, he did other stuff. He was a cavalry scout. But uh, in the Coast Guard, he was a mechanic on the ships. And by nature, Joe is a mechanic. <laughs> he is like MacGyver. But because of that, I am not mechanically inclined because Joe has always taken very good care of me our entire almost 24 year marriage. He changes the oil in our vehicles, he does all of our vehicle maintenance, he does everything and so just teaching me how to start the generator is a big thing for me. And being out here off grid in Alaska, I know the importance of learning these things. If Joe ever gets sick or injured and he's down for a while or God forbid worse, I need to know how to run all these things out here because we're pretty far out and we are off grid. So if I don't know how to start that generator to charge up the batteries on the days that we don't have sun, that could be a problem. Oh. But I am so grateful that you're so mechanically inclined. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got a little kit, huh? A little O-ring kit. Ooh, Ooh look at all those O-rings. Might be her, huh? Oh, look at all the O-rings. Was that too much? Those are so tiny. Mm. I'm surprised your hands can even work with something like that. Mm. See that stuff dried my fingers out? Yeah. I like your manly hands though, Joe. Mm. They're good back scratchers. <laughs> Gunner is not happy about being in the house. So Parker's been teaching Bradley how to pull him in the sled. I showed you guys that on the last video. But Gunner wants nothing to do with it. Bradley loves it. But if Gunner's out here when Bradley's doing it, Gunner wants to stop Parker and Bradley. He attacks Bradley, biting him, not biting him for real, but just doesn't want to let him do it. So whenever Bradley and Parker are sled sledding, we got to keep Gunner in the house or else they can't have any fun. Is that it? That's all there is to it, huh? Well, that wasn't too bad, Joe. Mm, so you can do it next time? Um, <laughs> maybe not completely. However, that didn't seem like a lot of steps. Maybe I could learn. Doesn't seem too hard. Just drain it and fill it. Yeah, drain it and fill it. Check out Parker and Bradley's little sled dogging operation. So Parker goes and puts his toy down there. Look at Bradley, so focused, listens to every command. Parker found a way to make him do it without me or Joe calling Bradley. <laughs> He's so creative. Yay, yay, yay! Oh, that's a good boy! <laughs> good boy, B! Hang on, P. like it's nothing. Parker loves it. <laughs> oh, you're such a good boy. Stay. Stay. Ready, P? Go get it.
had to come inside to warm up for just a second. My toes are burning. Thought I would give you guys a little update on the kitties. They're doing great. They have taken to the puppies. The puppies have taken to them. It took Gunner a little bit longer than Bradley. Gunner still wanted to eat them for a tasty little snack. But now, as I posted over on Instagram, Gunner, they climb all over Gunner. They nibble on his tail and he's just so sweet. It's amazing because those dogs are big and they're strong and they're so gentle with these little kitties. Let me show you how they're doing. There's little Rusty man. Rusty. Oh, you're trying to rub up my camera. Huh? Yes. You're so cute. My hands are cold, huh? Yeah, they've been outside. You're so handsome. Oh, yes. There's Asher's favorite spot to lay on Parker's school cart. Look at his green eyes, you guys. Is he not the cutest? Yeah. Oh, you got those sleepy eyes. Is it time for a nap? Hmm? What is that? Yeah. <laughs> Guess my camera. You cutie pie. They are so playful. enough for me to break a leg. <laughs> break a leg just walking. Oh. Huh? Now you gotta come down and get the shovel. Joe, give me the shovel! You forgot to take it with you. Joe, give me the shovel! You have to learn your lesson. Well, I'm gonna teach you a lesson in a minute. <sighs> you know, I don't really feel the need to stand up like you, you know what I'm saying? I feel pretty safe straddling the peak. Well, we'll see how far you get. Oh, you're so encouraging. I'm just saying, I'm going to be able to reach the edge. You're going to end up pushing it all off the side, but I don't want it off that side of the. Well, sometimes you don't always get what you want, Joe. Why are you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You okay? Got a little tickle? <laughs> of course you gotta make it difficult and be like, I only want the snow on one side of the shed. Well yeah, how am I supposed to get it over there? Why can't it just stay there? Uh -uh. <laughs> you get kind of wonky. You get wonky. No joke, you get wonky. Wonky Joe. You know what I'm saying? Wonky Joe. Didn't you already clean this off last time? Mm hmm. Oh. Aw, oh, Bradley. He's waiting for snow. <laughs> There's no more bee. <laughs> He thinks you're doing it just for him, Joe. <laughs> it is like unbelievably warm out here today. The temperature said 40 when I just went in the house. I don't know if that's true, but it feels 40 out here and it's sunny and the birds are out. Like, Joe, it feels like spring in January. It's just so exciting. After so much cold weather, you get a day like this. It's like, I love being out here when it's like this. <laughs> Over. Stay. Yeah, let's stay. Oh. <laughs> oh come on. You know. Are you gonna help me down? No. Babe. Let's jump off. You can't why am I jumping off? Look, it's barely four feet right here. Joseph. Joe, can you hold the ladder? Go. Because I don't know why going down is always scarier for me. Oh. Where's the thing? I not like going down. Why is it so scary going down? Okay. Uh. Okay. Yeah, baby! Here's to overcoming new things! New things? New things, 
Joe. Of course. I don't climb ladders, Joe, and I don't stand on snowy, icy roofs, Joe. You gotta celebrate the small wins, huh, B? Yeah, celebrating the small wins in life, baby, yeah. All right, guys, I think that's gonna do it for today's video. We got all the snow cleared off the sheds. I love being able to help Joe out with the chores. It's stepping out of my comfort zone a little bit. I am afraid of heights, but it's it's gotta be done, right? We have a lot of snow all the time in the winter, so I really wanna try to overcome that fear, and today was kind of part of that. Joe's using the Polaris with the plow right now to finish clearing out the rest of the snow, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Our next video, we're probably gonna be taking you guys along as we start building these garden boxes so they're ready for spring. And then I am excited to say we just ordered 25 chicks. They will be ready in March. We ordered them from a local lady that hatches Alaska breeds, Alaska hardy breeds, I should say, that do really well up here with the temperatures, Icelandics and things like that. So they will be ready in March. So we have between now and then to get some sort of chicken coop built and set up for them so that we can take in these chicks and kind of christen the homestead once and for all. They say chickens are the gateway drug to homesteaders, right? And I believe it. We have raised chickens for the last, I don't know, five or six years. And we did not have them when we moved into the apartment temporarily until we came up to Alaska and we miss them dearly so I am excited Parker's super excited to welcome the chicks and I think it's the first step to really building up our homestead so hit the like button for me you guys leave me some comments and subscribe if you haven't already we appreciate each of you and love having you on the journey and we'll see you next time on the next video It's got to be what, two, three feet dick? with the income we make off of a... That's a sniffle, if you can help it, Joe. Can't help it. Oh, my one sniffle. Oh, put your arm right in the way of the camera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, 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 they climb, they climb,